Welcome to the MD Edge Daily News for Wednesday, August 1st. I'm Nick Andrews. And I'm Mary Ellen Schneider. Today, interferon status and family history predict autoimmune connective tissue disease. Also today, the risk of revision repair for rotator cuff surgery is elevated with pre-op steroid injections. And later, CMS will resume risk adjustment payments. But our top story today comes from the annual meeting of the American Headache Society. Successful phase 3 data for new headache medications are finally reining in after a lengthy drought. This is according to a presentation by Dr. Richard Lipton, who called these the best of times at the AHS meeting in San Francisco. Dr. Lipton is the vice chair of the Department of Neurology at Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York. He notes that at the meeting, there were reports about seven new molecular entities for acute and preventative treatment of migraines, some new ways to deliver older drugs, and comparative effectiveness research. According to researchers, the novel agents in question share what appears to be better safety and tolerability than current market leaders, toparamate and triptans. The advancements include remigipant, ubrojipant, and lasmiditan. For remigipant, more than 2,100 patients with episodic migraine orally self-administered either 75 mg of remigipant or placebo whenever their headache pain reached moderate or severe intensity in trials named Study 301 and Study 302. Dr. Lipton reports that nearly 20% of patients in Study 302 were pain-free two hours after the dose, compared with about 12% of patients in the placebo arm. And... More than 37% of patients were free from photophobia, compared with about 25% of patients in the placebo arm. Ubrojapan is an oral CGRP receptor agonist that was studied in the Phase 3 ACHIEVE-2 trial. In ACHIEVE-2, a significantly higher percentage of patients who took Ubrojapan were pain-free, as well as free from the most bothersome symptoms at 2 hours compared with placebo. Lasmiditan is a novel oral serotonin receptor agonist that penetrates the CNS, and selectively targets the 5-HT1F receptor. In the Samurai and Spartan trials, lesmiditan also appeared to show significant benefit with regard to both pain and freedom from the most bothersome symptom at two hours. You can find more data and analysis of the studies by clicking the link in the description. Patients at risk for autoimmune connective tissue disease who progressed to actual disease had elevated interferon scores and a family history of autoimmune rheumatic disease. This suggests that interferon scores could be used to predict disease progression. This is according to results from a prospective observational study published in Annals of the Rheumatic Diseases. Researchers evaluated long-term data from musculoskeletal ultrasound and blood and skin biopsy samples of 118 patients at risk of developing autoimmune connective tissue disease. They then compared exams and samples at 12, 24, and 36 months with results from 49 healthy patients as well as more than 100 patients with systemic lupus erythematosus. The researchers report that 19 of the 118 patients in question progressed to autoimmune connective tissue disease. Of those, 14 developed SLE and 5 developed Sjogren's syndrome. There was no significant difference among baseline characteristics or findings from ultrasound in the study group compared with other groups. The researchers cannot confirm which interferon pathways predominate, but suggest that progression to autoimmune connectivity disorder may not be exclusively driven by type 1 interferon, but rather by a synergistic activation of interferon-stimulated genes. Patients who received a corticosteroid injection within six months before rotator cuff repair are more likely to undergo a revision surgery in the three years that follow. This is according to the results of a large database study presented at the annual meeting of the American Orthopedic Society of Sports Medicine in San Diego. In the study, researchers reviewed market scans claims data between 2010 and 2014 
and identified nearly 5,000 patients who underwent surgery to repair a rotator cuff tear. They report that nearly 400 patients required revision repair within the following three years. Patients who needed a revision were older and more likely to be smokers. These patients were also significantly more likely to have received any injection prior to surgery. The risk for revision surgery was highest in patients who received the injection between three and six months before surgery, but the risk was also elevated for those who received injection six to 12 months prior and zero to three months prior. And finally today, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services has resumed the risk adjustment payment program from calendar year 2017. The agency is also taking steps to ensure the program's operation for 2018 and beyond. CMS recently released a final rule that reissues the risk adjustment methodology and offers additional explanation. The program is part of the Affordable Care Act and essentially redistributes money between health plans based on whether they are taking on healthy, low-cost patients or sicker, high-cost patients. CMS bases its risk adjustment on statewide average premiums. CMS Administrator Seema Verma says that this final rule will restore operation of the risk adjustment program and mitigate some of the uncertainty caused by recent litigation. CMS had halted the risk adjustment program in July following legal action. Last January, the U.S. District Court for the District of Massachusetts ruled that CMS was acting within its authority in promulgating its methodology based on statewide average premiums. One month later, the U.S. District Court for the District of New Mexico ruled that the methodology was invalid and barred CMS from collecting or making payments. A motion to reconsider was filed in New Mexico in June, but a ruling on that is not expected until early September, which prompted the unusual move to issue a final rule without any notice or comment period. CMS says that there will be a notice of proposed rulemaking with the normal comment period related to the risk adjustment payments for the 2018 calendar year. And that concludes the first edition of the Daily News in the month of August. You can find more on these stories, including further data on novel headache medications and the new CMS rule, by clicking the links in the description. For MD Edge, I'm Mary Ellen Schneider. And I'm Nick Andrews. The MD Edge Sidecast is all new today with part two of our discussion on ketamine. You can find the Sidecast and the Daily News wherever podcasts are found.